Sam, what do we know about this trip in terms of what was on the agenda and what was discussed behind closed doors? It was a pretty quick trip, actually. I mean, it was a stopover on his way to Japan. Um, we're told he had a very quick meeting with the Crown Prince, Mohammed bin Salman, and then he made that uh, speech, you know, to the Arab leaders. And it was actually a bit awkward because, I mean, one of the things he said, he said, unfortunately, there are some in the world and here among you who turn a blind eye to those cages and illegal annexations. I mean, referring to uh, Russia's actions in, in Ukraine. And it was, it was awkward because, I mean, uh, you have leaders like Bashar al-Assad sitting there who's uh, accused of uh, war crimes and, uh, and crimes against humanity. And you have a lot of uh, Arab leaders uh, including the host, who, who uh, jail uh, political opponents and, and critics. Sam, welcome to the show. Welcome to Bloomberg. Good to have you on, on the show this morning. Yeah, it, it made for some discomfort, but maybe it is that Saudi wants to sort of project itself as this very much Ari Vest moment on the geopolitical stage. Um, but they're also using their wealth to try and change the... I suppose the perspective about the kingdom, they're willing to pay Lionel, Lionel Messi 400 million bucks a year in the twilight of his career. I mean, this is some serious money in sport, isn't it? Uh, absolutely, but uh, um, good to speak with you, Manus. I mean, I think it's it's all part of this uh, wow factor. I mean, they they, they want to get Messi and Ronaldo. They want to get Zelensky and Assad in the same place. So uh, there are also a lot of other factors mo motivating this. They want to change the conversation. They want to change the narrative. People keep talking about the murder of uh, Washington Post uh, a columnist Jamal Khashoggi and the brutal war in Yemen and the jailing of... Uh, of, of critics in Saudi Arabia. They want to change the conversation. They want to shift it to somewhere else. And most importantly, they want to win hearts and minds. They want people to come and visit and, and live in Saudi Arabia, invest in Saudi Arabia. They want to show them this is a welcoming place, not a th threatening place. And obviously, there are domestic considerations. I mean, he, this is uh, uh, fir first and foremost meant to uh, energize and engage the youth. I mean, 35% of the, of the country's population, I'm sorry, 70% mm -hmm. of the country's population population is under the age of 35, uh, so uh, he wants them involved. Uh, also, uh, leisure, uh, sports, entertainment, uh, they want that to be uh, uh, an engine of job creation. So, uh, I mean, th ultimately, they're looking at p potentially this sector okay. uh, accounting for 10 percent of, uh, of GDP. And how does uh, this effort compare with what other Gulf countries are doing? Like I'm thinking about the UAE and Qatar in terms of, of scale. That's a great question, Yusuf. So, uh, yes, I mean, it, uh, it's evocative of, of what the Qataris and the Emiratis have done, but this is a lot more drastic. This is on a much grander scale, particularly like considering where the Saudis are starting from. I mean, they, none of this existed. I mean, you know that yourself. You've traveled to the country. Uh, I mean, uh, until recently, men and women couldn't be in the same room. A lot of these activities, sports, concerts, were uh, prohibited, if not punishable, according to a, a strict inter interpretation of, of Islam. Uh, I mean, in fact, the religious establishment, unlike all these other countries that you mentioned, was effectively a partner in ruling Saudi Arabia. All of that has been swept aside, and uh, it's a total re reorientation, as one uh, expert told me.